Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Well it's been long overdue for a new video for installing Mac OS on KVM on Unraid. Well as High Sierra is out in a day or two, let's install that. Hi guys. So we want to install Hi Sierra on our Unraid KVM host. Well, things have got much better than they were before. Using Q35 2.9, we can use a technique so we don't have to use a hack version of Clover anymore to get the correct CPU speed. So that means we can always update to the latest version of Clover without having to worry about anything. And also talking about not having to worry about things, we also don't have to worry about the terrible mouse tracking in VNC anymore. We can fix that too. Now, I did upload this video yesterday, but I've taken it down and re-edited it due to finding out that Unraid 6.4 RC9 was released just the day before I uploaded the first video. Now, this has a newer version of QMU in it, so this is the best version to use, this or a later version. I was using the 6.4 RC7 in the video because the RC8 didn't work with OS X VMs. But in the RC9, it has a later version of QMU, which has fixed this problem. And it also brings Q35 2.10. This has some other advantages, in the fact that the Apple SMC emulation is also fixed. So this means that we don't have to use the fake SMC kext anymore if we don't want to. We can go back to actually putting the SMC K into the XML, like we could in the OSX VMs in versions earlier than 10.12.4. So this is all really great for running an OSX VM, but please do bear in mind that High Sierra is very new and there may be various issues that we're not all aware of yet, so please keep that in mind when making this VM. I've been running it for a little while and it seems good, however, because Nvidia have not yet released the web drivers for High Sierra, I'm unable to get my GPUs working, so I'm using a remote connection with VNC, Splashtop or No Machine until those Nvidia drivers surface. So if you're not ready to use High Sierra, then this video works fine with normal Sierra, and you'll get all the new benefits such as not having to use a patch clover, etc. Anyway, enough talk, and let's make a start. Right, so what you're gonna need for this video is you're gonna need a High Sierra bootable flash drive, which if you don't have one, then please see my previous video here about how to create it with the correct config P list and other files included. OK, so you've got your USB flash drive, so let's plug it into the server and then go to the Unraid web UI. And if we scroll down here, under the unassigned devices, we can see here, this is my USB drive here. And we can see here, this is the install disk. And we want to make a note of what this, these letters are here. For me, it's SDR. Now we're going to copy this flash drive and make it into a VDisk. And we're going to use that for the install. And for that, we're going to have to make an SSH connection to the server. So let's open up our support files and in the VM Macintosh files here, the XML for OSX, open up this text here. Okay, so let's copy this line here and paste this in here. Now what we need to do, first we need to change this letter here where it says SDX to the letter that we saw earlier and for me it was SDR. And now in these speech marks here, we need to put the location where we want to save the file. So then just press enter and we see here the progress will slowly go up. Okay, so when it gets to 100% then we're done. So we can close this window. So now we can remove our USB stick as we can use this image for all future installs of High Sierra. Right, so now let's move on to creating the OSX VM. So let's scroll down and we're going to base this off a Linux template. So the first thing to do is give it a name. I'm going to call it OS High Sierra. And I'm going to change this icon here out for one a bit more fitting. So I'm going to assign four cores to this machine, or eight vCPUs. And for memory, I'm going to give it eight gigs of RAM. Okay, and the next thing to make sure we have is we need to make sure that it's on Q35 2.9 or above. Now it's very important to make sure that we're using Q35 2.9 or later. If we don't do this then we would have to use a patch clover and the additional XML we're going to put in in this tutorial just won't work. And for BIOS type we need it to be OVMF and scroll down and now for our primary VDIS location we're going to manually set this 
and so we're going to use the location of the converted USB stick that we made into a V-Disc earlier. So for me that's in my unassigned devices disc, in my NVMe and then the iSierra.img. And we must have the primary VDisc bus to be SATA for all of our things in to do with this VM. And now we need to create a disc to actually install it onto, so let's click onto the plus to add another VDisc. And we can leave this on auto and it will create a, a VDisc 2 in OS High Sierra folder. I'm going to make mine 50 gigs but you may well want to make yours bigger. We need to leave the VDisc type onto RAW and again we need to use a SATA bus. And for graphics card, I'm going to leave it on VNC for the install. Um, luckily, we no longer have any problems with the VNC mouse anymore. And so let's scroll down. And now we want to untick Start VM After Creation and click Create. Okay, and here we can see our OS High Sierra. So let's just go back to our files that we downloaded earlier, to our OS High Sierra support files. And we want to go into the VM Macintosh files here. And we're going to open up the XML for OS X KVM Tech. Now, please, if you're using Windows, Again, please open it with Notepad++ because the line endings are different in Windows and if you don't do that, it can cause you some problems. Okay, and so now we're looking for this part here, which is the QMU command line part of the XML. So let's copy this and then go to the OS High Sierra VM and edit the XML. And let's scroll down to the bottom and here in between devices and domain, we just need to paste that XML. And for those of you who are interested, I'll just go through what this is here. This first part here, this here gives us a proper working keyboard and mouse, which fixes the problems that we used to have in VNC. And then next here, this is the SM BIOS type 2. And then here we have the CPU type and there's some extra parts here. So here we've got the KVM equals on and the plus ion VTSC and the VMware hyphen CPU hyphen frequency equals on. What all of these bits do together is they basically pass through the CPU frequency to the guest. And this is why we no longer need to use a patch version of Clover. But these features are only available in Q35 2.9 and above. Okay, so next we want to scroll up and locate our network adapter, which is just this bit of XML here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this address line here. I'm going to click cut and I'm going to bring up our XML here and just at the bottom of this page I'm going to paste the address line that we just took out. Now this is because we're going to need this a bit later on. And so what I'm going to do now is first we're going to change the network adapter type by copying and pasting this line in here. So we're changing the VertIO driver to the virtualized E1000 network driver, which is fully compatible with OS X. Right, so let's look at our XML again, and now we're gonna copy this address line here. Now we need to use this particular address line, otherwise the network adapter doesn't actually work. So we're gonna copy this line here, and we're gonna paste it to where we removed the other one from earlier. Now if I click on update, I'm gonna get an expected error. Now what it's telling me here with this line is the last line that we just pasted in, its address is being used twice, and we obviously can't have that. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to look for this same line here that we just pasted in elsewhere in the XML, and then we're going to change it to the one that we cut out earlier. We can see here this is the same address. So we're going to delete this now, and then we're going to go back to our XML, and here's the address line that we pasted in to use later. Well now we're going to use that and we're going to cut it out and we're going to paste it in replacing the double entry of that address. So basically all we've done is we swapped the original address of the network adapter with this one here. So now when we click update there won't be a conflict and everything will be fine. Ok so now we can start up the VM. And let's open up the VNC remote. Now before we go ahead and do anything we have to make a change in the OVMF setting. So let's go here to click restart computer, press enter and then keep pressing delete while it starts. This will bring us to this screen here, then we want to go down to device manager, press enter, then go down to OVMF platform configuration and hit enter again. And here we can see the resolution and we want to click onto that and then I'm going to set that for 1920 by 1080. And the reason I'm choosing 1920 by 1080 is because that matches what's in the Clover configurator at the moment and so our display will work correctly. Basically both the display resolutions have to match, the one in Clover and the one in the OVMF. So now we want to go down onto Commit Changes and Exit and now we can just click Continue. And now very quickly I'm going to force stop the VM just to make sure 
that starts with the correct settings and then just restarting the VM. Right now don't worry if the Clover screen looks a bit strange, um, it doesn't really matter at all. I found a few times it's looked actually worse than this. So now we can just hit enter to install the operating system. OK, and now you can see that the mouse is working absolutely fine, which is really great. So choose your language, and for me that's English. And now we have to click onto Disk Utility, and then click Continue. And here we'll see our disks. Now you may wonder where is your virtual hard drive. Well, what we need to do is we need to click onto the view here, and then click Show All Devices. And now here, this one, this is our install media, and this one here this is the disk that we're going to install onto. So what we need to do, we need to prepare this disk now. So we need to click onto Arrays. And now we can either install this with the normal Mac OS extended journal file system. But if we want to use the APFS file system, we can choose that now. And then just give the hard drive a name. Now it has to be on GUID partition map. And then we need to just click Arrays. OK, and now we need to click onto Done. Now what you should see under here you should see it saying APFS physical store and it should say container and then you should see the name of your disk underneath. Now if you don't see these three things something's gone wrong. So okay now we can close this and then click on install Mac OS and continue and continue again then agree to the terms and conditions and we need to highlight our disk and then click on to install. And this bit here is pretty quick, it doesn't take long to install it onto the hard drive. What it's doing is it's installing the OS install files onto the hard drive. Okay, and so now the VM's rebooting. So now our hard drive we just formatted earlier, that's a bootable device. So we can boot from that and install the system. Now this part here, it's really sped up and the computer does reboot a couple of times. Then you'll be able to choose your language and then just go through the wizard and follow the install prompts. Um, you're going to need to put in a username and password and create an account. And then select your time zone. And then you'll all be done. Right, so here we are in OS High Sierra. Now the first thing you'll see is it's going to want you to identify the keyboard. So just click continue and go through the prompts. So let's bring up about this Mac. And there we are, High Sierra. And if we take a look at the system report and then look at storage, we can see here that I'm using the APFS file system. So after all that work with the network adapter earlier, better check that the actual internet's actually working, and it is, so that's good. So the virtual machine's all up and running fine. Unfortunately, as yet, Nvidia haven't released the web drivers for their range of graphics cards for High Sierra, but they'll be coming really soon. So in the meantime, what I'm doing is I'm running some remote access software. Now I used to like Splashtop Desktop and that's really good, but the one I've been running lately is called No Machine and that's what I'm going to install now. So obviously we're going to install the Mac version and then just go through the prompts and install it. Um, we're also going to have to obviously have this installed on another machine in order for it to work. Um, this is it on my Mac, so basically all I need to do is just browse for the machine and then type in the username and password that I set up for my local account. Okay, so let's try out um, a YouTube video just to see how well everything's working. So if you're like me, you have been dying for a brand new Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi trailer. And guys, it looks like our patience are waiting is going to be paying off. So I think No Machine is a really good remote software. It works really well. Also installs its own sound adapter. So now we have everything tested and working. We should install the Clover onto the actual hard drive of the VM. And then we can remove the other image um, that we've been booting from and installing from. OK, so first we need to check that we can see the hard disks on the desktop. So if we can't, just go to Finder and then Preferences. And then just click the Show Hard Disks. So let's open the install Mac OS High Sierra here. This is the VDisk we created from the USB. And drag the High Sierra support files onto the desktop. OK, and so open the folder. And then inside the Hackintosh files, that's where I put my Clover earlier. Um, you may have put it in a different place, so just wherever you put your clover on your install, just open that now and double click to install. 
you're going to get a warning it's from an unidentified developer so click onto OK, go onto System Preferences, Security and Privacy and just click Open anyway and then click Continue, Continue again and now just click on Change Location and make sure you choose the hard disk that you installed Pi Sierra onto and click Continue. Now click Customize and make sure Install for UFI Booting only as ticks and also install Clover in the ESP and under Drivers again we want OSX APTIO Fix to Drive 64 and the Partition DXE 64 as well and just click Install. Okay, so now Clover's installed, what we have to do, we have to make sure that the Clover that we've just installed in here, into our main disk, is identical to the one which we've been using in here, which is in our install media. So the easiest way to do that is let's open up the OS Sierra support files here, and then open up the Hackintosh files, and we're going to use this EFI mounter version 3. Okay, and you can see here, it's found two EFI partitions. The Disk 0 S1 and the Disk 1 S1. Now the Disk 0 S1 is our first disk, which is this one here. Um, if you want to double check that, just use Disk Utility, and you'll be able to see here, the Mac install Sierra here, you can see that's Disk 0 S2. So the Disk 0 S1 is the EFI partition of this one. So let's open that, and click Mount. Okay, so here's the EFI partition. So let's open this up, and let's just copy the Clover folder onto the desktop. OK, so that's the Clover duplicated there. So now we can close this and let's eject this EFI partition. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Oh, f Alexa. And let's go back to the EFI mounter program again and open that. And now this time we want to open the EFI partition of our main disk. So this time it's disk 1 S1. OK, so let's go into the EFI folder here. And now I'm just going to delete this Clover folder. And then I'm going to copy the other one over from the desktop into here, so that now both clovers are identical in each disk. Right, so now I can delete this folder and shut the VM down. And go back to our VM here, and let's edit the XML. And if we scroll down, the first disk we come to, that's going to be our install image here. So we can delete this out now. And just click Update. And now we can start up the VM again without the USB image attached. And now the VM will start to boot. Okay, and now as you can see, the VM's booted up and it doesn't have the USB VDisk attached anymore. Um, and just before I go, I'm going to show you something quite fun. If we look at the About This Mac, you can see mine's got a Lime Tech Lime here. It doesn't have the High Sierra symbol. So let me show you how to do that. So click onto Finder and Applications and go down to Utilities. And then here where it says System Information, just right click that and go to Show Package Contents. And then go into Contents and then go into Resources. And then if we scroll down here, there's an image file that's called SystemLogo.tiff. And it's a TIFF image file that's displayed in the system information. So open up the High Sierra support files and go into VM Macintosh files, icons for Mac, and here's two that I've created. And now obviously my favourite one has to be the Space Invader one, so let's drop that one in. Okay, let's close these windows, and now let's take a look. Okay, so that's it, that's how you change your logo. So it has to be a TIFF file guys, and you also have to spell TIFF T-I-F-F, -F, not with a single F. So that's it, that's the end of the video. I will be doing a follow up when NVIDIA release the web drivers so we can pass through our graphics cards. But in the meantime that's it and I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did guys then please help me out and hit that like button, it really does help. And if you're not a subscriber then please subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in that next video.